Welcome to part two. Uh, we're going to be doing the electronics on this. So, these batteries, the little uh, Samsung 18650 cells, these are at uh, 2500 milliamp hours and they are rated to 25 amps. And right here we've got the little BMS. BMS stuff gets connected and then it does stuff. <laughs> uh, we'll go over that later when we actually connect this um, layout wise. Um, so it's 12 volt system, so three of these in series. And then both of those sets in parallel. So they'll be connected here and here, here and here. And then they'll be bridged here, here, and then on the ends. Um, this will leave, even though we, I can fit three wide in the deck, uh, first of all, this configuration is just make sense for the cell count we're doing. Um, but also that leaves room here for running any wires because uh, there's little room to run wires, especially the bigger gauge wires with three wide. Uh, so the battery management system is going to be here um, and then the little throttle controller will be here uh, which will be attached to the thumb throttle that's on the actual handlebars. Uh, and then the power is going to go here directly to the battery. This is the back of the scooter, this is the front of the scooter. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just going to solder these up. Uh, I'm using just a little tab welder, which is basically just a automotive relay with a big chunk a chunk switch. And then these two leads over here, which is where the battery goes. Turn it on real quick. It uh, melts the solder. What I'm actually doing is I'm putting little piece of solder on here, some, put some flux, put a little piece of solder on there, then put the nickel strip on top of that, then arc it, and so basically you're just putting enough heat in there to melt the solder, which is literally just on and off, uh, so it doesn't heat them up at all, uh, they stay cool enough to touch, uh, which should be fine as far as temperature goes. Okay, and then two ends nicely soldered, and that's cool enough to hold your finger to. So barely heats it up at all, gets a nice solder on there, and it's just very secure. Uh, you'd, you'd have you'd have trouble pulling that off with uh, pliers. So I'm gonna repeat this process for the other two packs, and I'll be right back. got all of the tabs welded up on either side of each pack of batteries um, and now going to basically they're all going to be stacked like this uh, and that'll get the 11.1 volts and how I'm going to do that uh, is basically going to solder that there and this here and then just fold them like that and then they'll all be glued and taped together so they won't move uh, but just having this gives you a good solid electrical connection rather than just pressing them together. That's welded on now. Uh, so now we're just going to put this here, like that, and then we'll just be able to fold it over and align it up. Right there we go. Those are all soldered nicely, and then you just gotta do. They are all soldered together, so we've just got basically 
negative positive negative positive negative positive. I grab the multimeter. You should see. There we go. Ten point six volts going through there, and of course these. Uh, I haven't charged these batteries at all right now, so they're just at their uh, whatever voltage they came from the factory, which is why it's at 10.5 right now, because uh, these ship a lot better, a lot safer, uh, when they're not fully charged, uh, just in the event that they do get shorted out in shipping or whatever. Uh, there's only so much power it can expend because it's already pretty much dead. Um, so I'm just heating up the hot glue gun. It's gonna put a bead of glue down and in between on either side, solidify the whole thing, uh, then probably wrap it a couple times in some tape, and then we'll test fit it. So I went ahead and uh, soldered these two wires in as well, right here and right here. So uh, reading from this end of the battery to here will give you 3.7 volts. This end of the battery to here will give you uh, 7.2. And then here to here will give you 11.1. .1. And that is the voltage that this board requires. You need a your zero voltage or your this side of the battery. 3.7 volt, 7.4 volt, and then your 11.1 uh, .1 volt. And then this is your positive and negative in and out for charging and discharging. I'm going to go ahead and solder the sensor wires in. Uh, those are going to go on this side of the board. It's a B1 for black and B2 for red. Uh, and then I'll solder the larger gauge wires onto either side and then onto the board. Alright, so after making the prettiest and nicest solder that I've ever done in my life, uh, everything is hooked up. We've got um, these two wires going to positive and negative, which these will be uh, the charging wires. Uh, and then we have output, negative to the BMS, positive to the switch, and then to the BMS. And then this wire is for the light in there. Uh, and so now everything is actually hooked up besides the uh, charging port, uh, which will be just mounted into the side. It's just a little uh, adapter plug. Uh, yeah, so let's, uh, I haven't soldered these connections yet because I don't know exactly where this is going to be positioned within the deck, so I don't want to make these, you know, six inches too short or ten inches too long or anything. Uh, so let's temporarily hook this up and run this for the first time off of the proper batteries. We've got these leads hooked up now. Going to the EMS. Uh, batteries are all hooked up. I also replaced the small one here with the larger one and slightly reposition the motor so that this is a lot, a lot tighter now and also we have a one to three reduction there. Um, I got a thumb throttle which is uh, Halifax so I'm running it through the uh, servo tester. Uh, I'll link a video in the description how to do this. It's really simple. You just solder this wire uh, and it turns the analog of the Halifax sensor into a digital, which the ESC can read. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. Right. And so we've got a thumb switch now. It seems to be a lot smoother uh, with this being tighter, which makes sense, of course. Um, and it's plenty torquey now. It, is, it has no trouble getting up to top speed. So the next step is to shove all of the electronics inside the deck, and I'll see you after that. So real quick before I throw everything in there, made a few uh, changes. Put the switch in the deck there. Also drilled a small hole right there, which is where charging port will go. I also put some tape on the bottom side of this so that it doesn't uh, contact the deck uh, and also just shoved a crap ton of hot glue all over everything just to double check the connections. 
Um, we just have to resize wires that go to the motor because they only need to be about this long at the moment. They're about this long. Uh, yeah, so that this is how everything's going to sit in the deck. This will be kind of on top of here more. Yeah, that's how everything's going to sit in there. Uh, so you'll have to just have power switch up here, charging port right here. Uh, then the only wires that will be visible are the ones going to the motor and the uh, throttle cable, which is on the throttle, and that's running through the deck at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to connect that to the uh, ESC and then, again, put a bunch of hot glue all over that so it doesn't go anywhere, uh, and then just pull that back inside. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to put everything in there. We officially have a working everything hooked up, no wires spewing out the side electric scooter. Uh, these are coming out right here. They aren't touching. Got our power switch up here. Uh, just a few wires that are running into the front of the deck. Our charging port there. And our wire coming up to throttle. So go ahead and turn her on. It's running. Awesome. I added some handlebars to extend the length out. The old handlebars come to about here. So we've got an extra three or four inches. This is still mounted on there as it was before. Same on this side, further out. Bit of grip. Nice. As far as the brakes go, I decided not to do it because I just tested it and the brake, the down gearing here and the amount of drag that this that, that creates, it's enough to break as much as I need. Because uh, like I said, this is not going horribly quick, so it doesn't need to stop horribly quick. Uh, so yeah, cue the cinematics. That is it. Scooter is done. Works great. Very fun. It's uh, it's got some torque to it. Uh, if you're not careful, it'll buck you off. If you hit the throttle too hard. Anyways, um, yeah, this project is finished. This is a really good one. Uh, this is the first scooter that I've seen that has a uh, solid connection. Most of the ones that I've seen have some sort of wheel that rubs on the drive wheel, uh, which of course isn't good at transferring power very efficiently uh, and it also wears your wheel out a lot. So this is a little more intensive but it works a lot better. Um, yeah, So this is just down here. Hit it with your foot and off you go. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, subscribe and like if you liked it. Uh, I'll have another project coming out soon. It involves uh, babies and electric cars. So stay tuned for that.